Hello, hi Jeffrey, how are you? Hello, Ken, how are you? I'm okay. We still have thank eight minutes to go, yeah. Thank Question. you for your uh, your knowledge this semester. I, I really learned a lot. Oh, okay. And that's, that's great, yeah. I like the way you draw things and map it out. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. And this one is a, I would say, pre-recorded uh, course primarily, right? And then it's also online, primarily online, because I'm not physically in, in Illinois. So so basically, we have to rely on a lot of homework. So, mm -hmm. so we try to provide the best set of the homework for every student to work on. I know it's actually a lot of loading, but hopefully... People who go through it will learn something, right? That's the purpose. Well, I, I learned a lot, but yeah. the projects are very challenging. Very challenging, yes. We, I told you, our course quality is almost the same or even better than Berkeley or MIT. Well, right? I appreciate that. Uh, don't don't look down yourself that you cannot do it. Just try, okay? Just try. Well, I was doing that, I do know that some students copy homework from uh previous year, but well, we, we don't have that much time to check, right? Some of you, I think you is actually uh working on it then by yourself, but some of the students do copy, okay? But this is a challenging course. I do not try to actually criticize on people who actually uh, refuse to work on some project by copying or something. I don't want to uh, criticize on them. But anyway, for who, whoever who work hard to try to go through will definitely learn something. That's our purpose. Oh, yeah. And that's our purpose. But yeah, this actually, we have to do it in this way because uh, this is an online course. It's not like uh, on campus that you can ask question at any time you want, right? And office hour is actually done and wrong in that way. So we actually kind of present in a different way. Uh, I, I would believe that in the long run, school will, will change to the way that we are presenting right now because, right. because that we don't have that many uh, on-site calls and students sit together. That wastes a lot of time. And you can, if you are able to work on a project more, you actually will outperform those people who just attending the lectures. That's what we believe. Yeah, I, I think there's value in in coming to a place, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And course, and meeting your other students and yeah, that's actually for social life and also for connection and also for co collaboration and for working on a team. It, it's hard to work on a team. Online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Online is very hard to work on as a team. So the project I emphasize that we have to work on it by uh, the student individual work because that usually the teamwork if the course is online. It's very easy that some students do not do not work on it. Some students work very hard on it. So it's very hard to differentiate or uh, create it on the people who actually work hard and on the people who uh, did not even participate, right? And, and then it's hard to delegate yes. what somebody's going to write code for. Or what to, I mean, yes. maybe they don't write it as well as, uh, as other yes. people. Yes. And also another thing is like, uh, when I do grading, I as long as some people who actually uh, submit early enough, okay, we try not to deduct too much because I my belief is that the best way to learn is not trying to, okay, this guy A, this that guy B, that guy C, okay, something like that. We actually want to look at the completion. As long as you complete and you make minor mistake, that that actually is acceptable. Who who won't make mistake, right? Mm -hmm. We don't we don't check at the result that okay this is two point three four and you are two point three two so you are wrong we don't do that right actually if it's just a a, a couple of a digit of an error that that's not the main thing uh, a teacher should look at we I primarily look at whether your program is complete or not okay if it is complete you do spend time then we I usually will get them full score unless that they are late or they are actually uh, completely not working on the topic, right? Then we, we would do, do detection, yeah. And I try to, this, this is the way we, I teach, especially online, 
and that, that I think in the future this may become the mainstream because uh, school, I think we'll still have some people who teach uh, the regular, uh, the so-called brick and mortar uh, school, right? You go to the mm -hmm. school and sit there to, to study. But the kind of online education still be very important now because you cannot teach everything in the regular traditional school format. You cannot. You still need to have some, some courses that you, you are interested in. You can do it purely online. Yeah, purely yeah. online. So that's the way I teach and also the way I teach my son as well. Okay. So for example, <laughs> no way. my son, actually, I have a son who is right now at UC Berkeley. But when he is in high school, his high school has sick period, right? Some private school has A period. But when you try to compete as a public school student, you need a lot of these online courses. <clears throat> online courses and actually extra AP courses or extra college dual enrollment. So I trained him to have the right mindset and also the way to take courses uh, online. Okay, so he ended up finishing 18 AP, all fives, okay, and also finished 16 dual enrollment from the college and also universities. So he ended up, he, when he entered Berkeley, he was as admitted to Berkeley MET program. That's dual degree. That's mechanical and engineering? No, it's actually Haas Business School plus X. X is the electrical engineering and computer science. It's the top program at the Berkeley, right? Wow. It's actually number one in WE in the US. I think only MIT can 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 compete with uh, X. And also Haas is number three in business in under um, undergraduate, if you check the US news. So he actually start with 113 units created by the AP and DO enrollment. Yeah, so very hard training for free for him. Very hard training. Oh, that's great. Yeah. He had a, he a told, good teacher though. Yeah. I guide him through it, and actually, he recently competed in the Data Open. I don't know whether you know it or not. There's a da Data Open Championship. Hmm. He actually won the West Coast second place and going to the final in New York City. This is by the this Data Data Open Championship is by the Citadel. A trading the company beneath your feet, it turns again. So this competition. So he is actually learned AI in high individuals school individuals and competed uh, in in the university right now within the public so team for this. Uh, this thing. is to give you a first hand opportunity to see, to hear, to feel how the global financial market operates. So he's working with data, or he wants to work with data. He's working on AI, AI, and this uh, data open need AI and also need to learn the modeling. So you need to have the mathematical background for the modeling and also AI and for also computer science skill in combination, also business sense because you also need to present your project. And this data open is the top of the data science and AI competition in college and the competitor can be from uh, undergraduate to PhD. So as for his age, he's only a sophomore right now in Berkeley, but he's competing with a lot of top talented PhD students in this uh, data modeling right now. 10,000 nice. students nationwide applied to take part in one of the those datathons. Please join me in congratulating the winners and recipients of the $100,000 prize, team number one. Yeah, this team number one actually is the UC Berkeley team five years ago. Okay, so Berkeley X is very top in this uh, domain in data science. Okay, and 
sometime actually I do know, okay, the reason why I'm uh, talking about this right now is because computer science is changing. Okay, computer science as a top as a subject is changing. In the past, we learned core computer science uh, techniques such as database operation system, right? Programming language, and also computer architecture and uh, computer networking, right? Though these are and computer algorithms. These are the core courses for for the computer science. But now it's changing. Computer science is shifting gear. That now is not no longer uh, no longer in the same way. So here I have a presentation for how to go to the UC computer science majors. Okay, so so right now computer science on the core you need to learn math. Okay, and then you need to learn computer science and then a lot of application outside. Okay, so. Undergraduate, you get a computer science pro, uh, degree is very good. Okay, it's very good, but you need to also have knowledge on the domain uh, knowledge, such as PD school, okay, or core computing skills such as math. That EECS is electrical engineering and computer science that provide the best training for it. Okay, so here actually for him, my son, he go to uh, Berkeley. So he actually goes through the 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 lower division. That's a course, core courses in the Berkeley. Okay, so they have introduction to introduction to the computer science and the data structure and the machine structure such as C C double plus and also uh, assembly core. Okay, so I told you our course is actually a equivalent course to this uh, introduction to CS by Python, okay? This one we are teaching, the, the, this uh, 46 k CPSC. We are teaching a tougher version than the one taught in at Berkeley. But the Berkeley popular, this is 61A is very uh, popular. We, we, we are using the same name of the structure and the uh, uh, interpretation of computer program, okay, SICP curriculum. It's actually it's similar to that. So you you go through, we, I guarantee you that our course quality will be the same or even tougher than the one that taught in uh, Berkeley, okay. And that's the introduction to CS and uh, for the X department, you also need to go through introduction to EE by machine learning and robotics, okay. So they give the very fun, solid fundamental training. And beside, beyond this uh, lower division, then this is the AI track. So if you want to go to AI, okay, besides your fundamental CS, you need to learn multi-variable uh, calculus, a linear algebra differential equation, degree mass and probability and statistics, and then random process. These two are graduate school math, okay, and optimization model. And then besides this, you take the 188 artificial introduction to artificial intelligence, usually it's taught by natural language processing, and then machine learning, and then deep learning uh, network, okay, and then computer vision and robotics. These are application field for AI. So at this moment, if you see this one with spiny face, that means that my son already finished it as a sophomore, oh, <laughs> as a sophomore in college. So he actually finished the uh, degree requirement for X at Berkeley already. He finished everything that re required to graduate. And I think he will take this one and robotics in the future. And this will finish the AI trip. And AI CS and the traditional CS right now are will develop into the in the future they will be an AI degree and they will be a CS degree. They will in the future. Some school like CMU already have an AI degree. But right now we are coming from the traditional uh traditional CS to AI CS now. And traditional CS will be a different degree in the future. Right now, even very few schools have an AI degree yet, but in the future. So traditional CS is teaching you this. 
algorithm database computer architecture for Wii language operating system networking. Okay. And the AI is actually totally a different domain. Okay. So here we do give you the training that's a fundamental uh, to go, the, the kind of knowledge you know you need to learn to, to actually come from a traditional coding CS to translation CS. Chat GPT in a way is actually translating and using the machine learning model to translate your, your request to answer, okay? And traditional one is algorithm based. So you look for exact solution, but AI CS is not algorithm based, it's machine learning model based. So you will give you approximated solution. So usually when you train the model, you only get 70% correctness. You, you will never get 100% because it actually is approximation based, okay? It's actually approximation based. So you need to learn both. Okay, you need to learn both right now for the current age. You need to learn core CS. And if possible, you should also pick up the you should also pick up the AI track materials. Okay. Because at this moment, maybe 10 years later, nobody is doing coding. Okay. The traditional coding programming skill will be replaced by AI pretty soon, okay? But what, what, what kind of engineer will still survive? The one who can work on the models, the one who can work on the learn, machine learning, the one who can work on a drone or, or uh, autopiloting car, right? The one who can actually work on a character recognition or signal pattern recognition, right? So these are the kind of the CS that changing CS will divide it into half, traditional CS and AI degree. Okay, and AI degree, it would be a separate. Machine learning engineer and traditional uh, programmer would be different. And EE will be still, uh, digital engineering side will, will be very important because we will see a lot of AI chips will come in now, okay. Media G, GPU, okay, and TPU for Google will see more from becoming the supporting uh, computing core to the traditional CS and uh, the much the AI chips, okay, and AI chip and traditional processor will be separate. Pretty soon, it will become totally different uh, business, okay. So that's what I'm doing right now, okay? I'm trying to teach different students, give them the fundamental knowledge they need to go to the future AI training, okay? And AI pretty much is translation between languages. So we do uh, work on this one. So the term project, okay? The term project, I make it as an open project as an open project because I want students to find their own project, okay? I don't want to give them, the example is because a lot of students keep requesting, oh, I need to have some idea, but we do want you to do investigation and then find your own project that actually is better, okay? Because in the, in the future AI world, you need to be able to identify important problem by yourself. So that's why our term project keep in that format, okay? I do provide very few guidance about what project you should do or you should not do, okay? And so, because I want you to actually really find a project for yourself, that's one thing. Secondly, I want you to apply the knowledge that you learned from this course into the project. Okay, so what do you really learn from this course? For the structure and interpretation of computer programs, what do you really learn? We will use the project to see what you, you really learn. Okay, so some students just want me to give them project idea or just, just want to work on whatever simple uh, project 
we presented. That's not the whole purpose. We want you to work on the project, okay? We really want you to identify the project by yourself, if that's possible, okay? And that's the meaning of uh, taking this course. You learn a lot of uh, programming and the compilation skill. You want to apply it to some application. Okay, that's the purpose of the term project. And about the final survey, we have 500 points. Okay, about that, actually, that you cannot do too much. Okay, so I will describe how it works now. So basically, let's assume that you have 400, 4,500 base points, and you do get, uh, uh, say, 300 points point totally right and then and then that 500 is actually reserved for curving so the whole class i may curve for 300 more then this student he will get 4600 4, over 4500 4, so this actually will get more than 100 so he will get a okay is that okay so this one is actually the 300 over 500. This is for the final curving. I reserve that 500 point to curve the class, okay? Any question? So usually the whole class will receive a same point, maybe 300, maybe 200, maybe 100. The, the least cost, Bonus I gave before is 100, okay? Because the whole class did not attend any meeting. So I don't give them high score. Your course so far, I think every week a lot of students attending. So I would think that maybe it's better than 300 will be given for the final bonus, okay? Maybe, I cannot guarantee, but no like is that way, okay? And another thing is like, I use that curving point, try, just trying to make sure that A, A grade, A, A minus, A plus, is between one third to two third of the class, okay? That's one fundamental guideline I, I try to keep, okay? Because I think that if A is more than two third, then that course actually, not really uh, actually appreciate student who actually work hard, okay? And if the A below one third, I think that's too hard, okay? Too hard for student. So I use the final curving point to adjust the final grade based on the whole class performance. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so that's the policy that I had, okay? And how many points? I will be given to student. I don't know right now, okay? I don't know right now. I have to check every student's uh, final uh, final score to look at it because I have the mind of managing the A to be between one third and two third, okay? I think that's a fair. I use it for so many years and it's actually a fair policy. Any question? Any other question about the course? And we we are on the last week, so if you have any question, you are welcome to discuss. Okay. Any question? No. How about Matthew? You have any idea? What was the question? No, I just asked Matthew. I don't know whether he has a question or not. Ah. Uh... I actually do have a quick question. Yes. On this last uh, quiz, what was the answer to the four box one? Because I messed it up. I got two right, and I'm confused what the other two were supposed to be. Mm, what, what is the question? Uh, the question was... Is that the, the, the floor of the compilation? Yeah, that one. That one, I think you can you can find a solution in the slices. Okay. Okay. All right. That one you can find it on a slice. If you are wrong, uh, you you have to study the the slice. Okay. Okay. 
And right. project due, okay, project due time, okay. Let me actually talk about the final project due time. So today is Monday. So our last day of the class actually is supposed to be the Friday, right? Supposed the Friday is the last day for the class. But, okay, so let me find my calendar. So suppose our class will finish 28th, right? But the, the real due time that I was accept the homework will be Sunday of the 30th, midnight, 15, that's 11.59 p.m. Central time. Okay, so it's Sunday 30th, 11 p.m., 11.59 p.m. If you pass it, I will not accept it. No matter what reason it is, I just don't take it because I need to submit a score AP, AAM Tuesday for the whole school class. I need to tabulate your result on Monday and then add in the curve points and sorting out who is A, who is B, who is C, okay? Is that okay? Yeah. And also one thing I would like to, to uh, actually announce is like, if you feel you, you are not going to get the full score, you request for incomplete, you need to let me know, okay? If some student, I don't know who will have the re requirement, please uh, actually give me the request. I don't give you F, usually I don't give you F, okay? And D, I, I sell them, and I, I would say neighbor so far, but I will give you C, okay, or C minus, just let you pass, okay? So if you don't like the kind of score and you need to, uh, you, you need to declare that you want to have it incomplete, so you, in the coming uh, semester, you can still take it. Please uh, message me, okay? I need you to message me to let me know you, you prefer to have an incomplete so you can, Take it later. Okay. Otherwise, I was assigning to according to the 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 final score you you got from the course to tabulate your your final grade. Okay. Any question? I don't fail student. Okay. But uh, if you have the need to do incomplete, let me know. Okay. Any other question? I I have one question. So yes. I was getting kind of excited about functional programming. Yes. And uh, did you say that they use it in machine language or learning and AI? Yeah. So it would be beneficial to continue learning about it. Yeah, and actually, Quant, Quant Finance. Okay. Functional finance need to use a C double plus. So there is, if you want to do that, you actually uh, need to learn C double plus. And a lot of C double plus is using C double plus functional programming. Okay, you can do, right now you can use a Python to learn functional programming. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but uh, when you need to accelerate your, your program, you still need to learn advanced C double plus. And those advanced C double plus, including the C double plus 2020, okay, they add the functional programming. So you need to do that, okay? You need to do that. So they are actually functional programming for modern C double plus or Go language. So there are some topics like that. You have to so figure out. So that will not be teach in the, the C double plus functional programming will not be teach in at the college level. Okay, usually these are something you need to explore by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, not something. So I mentioned my son before, right? My son actually learned C double plus in high school and then uh, he actually finishes Python as well, Python, C double plus, and also uh, Java, and also JavaScript. 
and he finished many, many languages before in high school. So for example, he interviewed with a financial firm. They do require, like Citadel, they do require, they do require the C double plus. Okay. Backend programming, they require C double plus. So we use uh, Python for you for, to, to teach you functional programming because Python is easier to handle, okay? But if you really want to find a decent job in machine learning and in in uh, in in AI, okay, still still pass still be very uh, essential, okay. Mm -hmm. Especially you go into the quant, they need speed, okay. They need speed, okay. So you need to why C double plus good for quantitative finance, okay. If you want to find job in Wall Street or Chicago uh, downtown area, okay. That's a good question, okay. Uh, so, so there are tons of courses you can take from the internet if you really want to learn uh, functional programming, C double plus, but you need to uh, get started step by step. If you need uh, guidance or need some uh, introductory, uh, I do have some reference material, okay. I do have. Oh, thanks. So you can probably uh, message me for that, okay. Okay, so this is uh, the last uh, lecture. If no more question, I'm going to go over it, okay? Last lecture is that we do learn different uh, languages, uh, programming language structures, and we do learn the, how to design the lecture and interpret uh, and the parser, okay? So, and we do also learn the virtual machine. Now is the final topic that we do apply those uh, knowledge to design a scheme interpreter, okay? So it will be a integration of scheme interpreter and then starting from a uh, calculator language to list language, a lip, simple Lisp, okay? This Lisp is Lisp. And we do say that scheme is actually a advanced version of Lisp. So basically this is simple, simple version of the scheme, okay? In this uh, whole uh, lecture, okay? Okay, so overview, okay? You need to know about a scheme program. And scheme program is a list. So it's a list inside this, list, 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 and you try to evaluate the list. So basically this scheme evaluation is the evaluation of the list, okay? So it usually the list language is like, you apply the function to the X1, X2, X3. Apply the, the first, your, your cat card to your cat, okay? Apply the first elements operation to the data after it. Okay, if you remember the scheme. Okay, so that's actually the purpose. So the left hand side is Java. Okay, right hand side is a scheme. So basically, scheme interpreter is how you evaluate your scheme input in list. And then, and then evaluate. Okay, the interpreter's main purpose is doing this. Okay, so scheme language, scheme language has a syntax and semantics. So we teach you in uh, lecture 10, okay? We teach you in lecture 10. So here, uh, we don't repeat it. Here we don't repeat it, okay? So basically they are function, they are selections, and it's, it's put on the first places of the list. Okay, so here we have the language number one, this P calculator. So a calculator by this. So there's a define R function and then, and then uh, 10, okay. And time pi, so R is actually 10, okay. And then you have times the operator. So pi and the times R, R. So R, 
R times R, okay, times pi, okay, would be the result. That would be pi R square, okay. So this one you do have available reference, that is R. This pi pi is also a constant. It's also a constant literal. And there's a conditional statement, a yeah, definition and procedure code. So these are basic language uh, uh, language uh, structure, okay? For the first language, this P calculator. Okay, since we need to deal with these, so we need to pass this, 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 okay? When we design a parser, we need to identify from the this good string for it. So in the parser, we need to have the semantic synthetic rule about the parsing for the uh, for the parsing tree. So the, for the parsing tree, we need to identify what is available, what is constant, what is a conditional statement, what is definition, what is procedure for, okay? And then later you do execution, okay? Passing, passing into a, a abstract syntax tree and then evaluate to get a result. Okay, so this is how the interpreter works. So program would be equals begin, define R equals 10, and then uh, evaluate pi times uh, R squared, okay? So we pass a program, we get this, okay? And then we evaluate the passing program and we will get uh, this. And this one is what? This one is the whole execution of your interpreter. For scheme. Okay, so your scheme input is this, right? And then you pass it to this. And then you evaluate the passing of the program, you get this. Okay, so this is the, how the interpreter works. Any questions so far? Okay, now this is the flow. The next one is that you need to define a pattern simple. Okay, str. Number, number is integer of row. Atom, atom is simple or number. So atom is two type number or number or okay, um, number or or simple okay and it's eight on and eight on uh comma list can be an expression okay list is one kind of list and environment equal dictionary okay so it's actually a lot of binding between ID and the value, ID and value, that's actually your environment, okay? So when you set define R equals 10, now create the dictionary binding variable versus value and put into the environment, is that okay? And you bind, bind in pi, pi would be a constant. It would be bind with 1.3.14. Okay. Okay, and then you have star R R. Now R is binding to 10, so it will evaluate by the tree structure. Okay, and you will get 100. And then you evaluate the times PI. So this portion recursively evaluating it is not hard. Okay. Every time you recursively get the first operand to, to apply to the, the rest of the list. That's not hard, okay. Okay, so this is actually the basic definition for the type, okay. And then passing, you would create tokenization. Make sure that your input got tokenized to this. So these are the tokenized token tree, okay. So that's a lexer. Tokenizer is a lexer. And then you feed the token to the passing program. Okay. Here you, we do have that. And then you pass it one by one to see if it's a atom or it's a list. Okay. 
and then your program will be passed and you will get the result pass the result passing is here okay and after that based on your environment your environment will have a default setting here okay you start with nothing and then you match the available and with constants you will build up your environment update it, okay so there's an eval function will evaluate your your list okay so you put your uh, list and your environment then you go through the evaluation of your your uh what your passing result your passing result will be passed into the evaluation and evaluation would be getting the result okay then evaluate the the the, the syntax tree that you build from the parser and you get a result here okay any question so you can, you can go back to look at the the different part of the call. You can go back to look at the different part of the call. So lecture sixteen, okay. So you can download a call from our course for this one. Okay, this is this P uh, language number one. Okay, so there is an input uh, record function. Okay, the input this P function. Okay, it's called define r equals 10 times this, okay? So this one is called a.scm. SCCM means scheme, okay? Usually we use a rocket RKT, but here we use a SCCM file, okay? And then the tokenizer is here, okay? This one is a tokenizer. And then your parser, okay? your parser program is in this, uh, in here, okay? Including the definition of the stage and tokenizer and parser. And then your environment, your environment is for the environment of PYE actually is uh, including the evaluator, okay. And then your main program, your main program is, is a top level, okay. At the end, this is the top level. This is for calculator the PYE. Okay, this one will, will actually, okay. So let's do, uh, English, 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 okay. Wait, how come it's telling, oh, I'm sorry, I need to use terminal. So Python, okay, the, the one call doesn't work, okay. Because it doesn't check the input. This, uh, this. Okay, so we do plus three, one. Okay, times plus. Two, one, four. So this one you see actually can perform the calculator without problem, okay? This uh, this but the calculator, it actually is an interpreter. So study the whole structure, you will know that a very basic, very basic scheme interpreter, okay? This one is number one, the simplest version of this this person but interpreter. Any question? 
So we do have the this number one. We also have this for number two, number three. Okay, different version of the uh, of the this scheme interpret. Okay, so that's a power. You go into there, you will be able to learn. And then and then this uh, lecture we have this but not this p number two and this p number three. So it's actually adding more function to it. Okay. It's adding more function to it. So at this moment, we only have the mathematical calculation and basic function. So this number two, this one would add the quotation to it, would actually have the set Q, set exclamation mark, and lambda expression into it. Okay, so that's the purpose of having this, uh, this P2. So this P2 add more language feature to it. And it's the code, okay. Code being added, okay. And set exclamation mark, you just set R2 to become R square, okay. And the lambda expression. So this is the, uh, this P2, okay. This P2 language. So you add the lambda expression, okay. And this P2, when you run, you will actually get the result using the lambda function, okay? So that's the purpose of this P2. Okay, so you can go through here detail how this P2 implement that, okay? And the EMV is actually redefine as a class. Your binding binding condition become a new class. Okay. So that's a new technology being applied to the this P2. Okay. So let's look at this uh, this P2. Okay. So let me find a new folder. It's in this P2. So this uh, this P2, there's a lambda one SCN. There's a lambda two. Okay, so you can see that the uh, lambda two scheme is actually a lot of function now. Okay, and your main program is here. Your list per this P number two is this one. Okay, so main program is a long list. Okay, so that's actually go to here. We do the Python. Okay, long list. Okay, and you can get these. Okay, let's copy a few of them. And you're wrong, okay? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So, so this uh, scheme language, I do not. Uh, it, there is no loading mode, but you actually can copy statement by statement. From that, you can copy statement by statement from here to here, okay? And loading the code, as you you just need to, uh, you just need to what? You just need to write in the loading mode instead of you write you load a, a program and then you pass line by line, line by line. They, this list number two should be able to run it. Okay. Any question? So when you're defining first car, I mean, I know that that's just code or whatever, but um, it, it's like an index. Variable. No, you and actually, that, you actually rest is is. Uh, you will actually bind say R two with R square into the dictionary. So next time when you need it, the environment will have this, and they will call. So define is very simple. Whatever define, you just bind them. 
So you can buy a, a ID with some value. You can also find some ID with some function. That's why you can find car or cat too. Is that okay? Yes. Binding is not just binding value. Sometimes you can also bind in a lambda to function. Okay. But you're binding the car, the ID. Binding is that when you do define, when you do define, they just put that two definition to a dictionary in the environment. Right. Yes. They just do that. But when they evaluate, they will find these two evaluate with that. Right. Because that's how you find them. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you find them. And binding is just for the future use. Right. Binding is just for the future use. Oh, yeah. When you evaluate, they will actually run it. Okay. So that's the language number two. So number two, actually, adding more coding and sub value and also binding. Lambda expression, okay. And then number three, it will put in the functional structure. So you need to deal with the string, booleans, data type, complex number, protein. Okay, also you need to deal with the function, if a statement, and those uh, program structures. And that's put into the number three. So number three is even more advanced. And it add more feature to it, okay. And those feature are program structure and uh, uh, and uh, they have if they have the conditional, they have those kind of programming structure into it, okay. That's the level of number this P three, okay. And you need to, if you are interested in the going to the detail of this, and you also deal with procedure with arbitrary number of arguments. Okay. So number three have many, many features. And here we introduce each feature, how are they being implemented? Okay. And again, this is too much detail. So you should look at our recording. Okay, or you need to go through the function and download the course, study line by line. Okay, we don't have that much time to cover everything here. Okay. And it's actually many, many features. So we go into different parts. I, I try to be complete. Okay, so I demonstrate every function and how they work. But right here, I don't have time to go through each individual one of them, too many. Too many, okay. So that's the purpose of this uh, one. Okay, so re reflection. Okay, so this course we started with the programming language features. We talk about functional programming, object oriented programming, and imperative programming, right? And after that, we go back to look at okay, these are programming structures, and then how can we interpret it, the language from one language to the other? And translation or interpretation is the main purpose of this course, okay? And we, we teach you how to step-by-step step design an interpreter, okay? Any question so far? Or any question not related to this course can also be asked, okay? AI or computer, if you have any question. No. Okay, if not, uh, you are welcome and thank you for uh, joining in the, uh, this course, okay? And many, most of you are working very hard. So I actually would like to uh, thank you for hard working. Also, uh, congratulating you to finish a very tough course, okay? I would say this course is very tough, but I'll try to be nice on the grading, okay? Okay, if no question, uh, really thank you for participating in this course. Okay, and we finish call up to here. Okay, and then I do expecting everyone enjoy the course and also uh, have a nice uh, summer. Okay. I have a question. 
Yes. So um, for the for the final, do we? So how do you want the presentation? So do you need a video or or it doesn't video matter. or PowerPoint both acceptable. Video or PowerPoint acceptable. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you want us to go um, to explain what the program do or what you're looking for exactly on the presentation? Presentation number one, you actually need to demonstrate how your program work and what's the purpose for doing the program. Okay. Yeah. So right. technically, do you need to explain every single line how they work? No, I don't need you to do that. But you do need to give me the presentation showing what you have done. Okay. And how you work. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's good enough. All right, thank you. Yeah. But you do need to give me the copy of your call. Yes, sir, definitely. Yes. So I and created some. Also, um, so the presentation like PowerPoint or YouTube, you focus on demonstrating the functionality, okay? Okay. And writing, writing is different from the PowerPoint. So a lot of students copy the material from the PowerPoint to the to the final report. That's actually wrong, okay? Final report, you need to quote whatever theory or whatever uh, paper you have read. But the presentation, we don't need that. I just need you to tell us what you have done and how you work, okay? Okay. But the, but the writing, you need that. You need to show me the references and then and then the theory and whatever uh, scheme you are using, more technical part you need to put in the writing, okay? Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Any other question? We do have two students finish the term project already, so should be fine. Okay. Any other question? Okay, no question. That's it for today. Okay, thank you and enjoy the summer. Okay. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.